All right, so of course the biggest difficulty that we run into when we're trying to execute the scissor sweep is that the person's weight stays too far back. And because all the weight is so centered on the heels, the knees, the legs, right? He has a very good balanced and based position. So what I would like to do is create enough forward shift that I actually see his glutes come off his heels. If I am pulling him in and holding the collar and starting to take the sleeve away, and now he tries to regain his composure, his posture, that's when I can open. And look, I don't touch the ground. Remember, I slide inside like this until the foot catches him. Right? Look at this foot on the right side. This catches the hip. It locks right there. And I'm going to use this foot as much as I use the collar and the sleeve because I really do need to get his head over or close to my head. If I try to sweep him here, he spreads the knees and makes a base. Maybe he even just swims this hand around and touches the ground, right? So I have to move effectively and efficiently. I need to get him worried about all of the weight that's transferring from this far back position to the over position, right? And how do I do that? I have to use all three components. I want to hit him low, which is the foot and the hip. Look, I pull him here with the foot and the hip. I also pull the sleeve, that's the middle. And so I have the low, now I have the middle. The sleeve stretches over me. And then I also have the high, right? So all three levels are covered. Using the collar for the high position, using the arm for the middle position, and then the foot right here in the hip for the low position. When all three of those combine, it's enough. If you watch from the back, you'll see that his glutes come off, right? His butt comes off his heels. That's what I need. Reset, please. Okay, I want him off his heels, like this. And then when I see that his head comes close to mine, that's when I switch the feet, right? If I do it too early, like this, it has no effect and I use a lot of energy, so I want to stretch him all the way. And then when I see his legs are light, it's easy for me to just switch and use the momentum to carry me up. From this position, look how I have the hand turned into the neck, right? I'm making a base position with my hand in the collar, and I also want this. I want the hand out wide so that I don't get rolled over here. Only when I see that because of my two based positions and I put the pressure on his hips that he becomes tired, that's when I start to move the hand around the head. And look, on the way back, I catch it. I don't go here and then grab high. I want to grab just on the side of the head where I can rake the elbow along the ear and catch so that it's tight right here. Now both hands are lined up directly, both arms rather, both forearms are in the slots of the neck, right? The space between the jaw and his collar, or the jaw and the shoulder, they're locked. And now to finish, it doesn't take much. I don't really have to turn ex extensively. I certainly don't have to pull, because when I pull, I take the head off the mat, I give up my balance, and I give him room, because my arms open to put the hand in between. Just keep the hands where they are, and try to drop this elbow down as I put the head to the mat. Don't lean the head straight over. That's what he wants to escape, right? Maybe from here he could just trap this arm and then he could lift his hips and now I'm going to roll, do the upa. Because I put my head in the wrong spot. If I'm centered, that's the weight distribution that he uses to take me over. So once I catch, drop the weight of your head down over the side, right there, this 45 degree angle between his shoulder and head. And he's going to tap before you get to the ground, usually, right? Because you lock this in place. This is locked in place. This is locked in place. The arms are like two sticks. They stay exactly where they are. And now I just want to increase pressure on the thing that's caught between the two sticks. In this case, it happens to be his neck. And so when I put the pressure down, he wants to give up there, right? So we get the, the finish effectively from there, okay? Be prepared, of course, that he may be moving to escape. So I have to keep my presence and maintain them out at all costs right before I finish the movement. Okay? Once he's a little tired, 
I come around the corner and catch and just settle the arm into that space and then follow him. Just like this. All right? That makes sense?